class. I hope y'all had a wonderful fall break. Um, I'm Miss Snow Rider, as you know. Um, today we're doing experiment five. It's over recycling aluminum, the preparation of an alum. The term alum is generally is a general family name for a crystalline substance composed of cations with a one plus and three plus charges. Um, in this experiment, we will set that up. Synthesize a type of alum called potassium aluminum sulfate diodecahydrate. Aluminum is considered a reactive metal, but because its surface is usually protected by a thin film of aluminum oxide, it reacts slowly with acid. It does, however, dissolve quickly in basic solutions. Excess hydroxide ion converts the aluminum to the tetrahydroxyluminate 3 ion. And as you can see, the formula is written on the board and a slow addition of acid will precipitate the white gelutinous aluminum hydroxide. And that equation is also written on the board. Continued addition of acid causes the hydroxide ions to completely neutralize. And the aluminum exists in solution as the hydrated ion, also written on the board. Aluminum hydroxide is considered to be an aphomoric hydroxide because it dissolves in both acids and bases. Miss Snyderider, I have a question. Yes, what is it? And why can't we just throw the aluminum away? Okay, so aluminum is an example of a resource where recycling is of great benefit. The major ore of aluminum is bauxite. And extracting aluminum from bauxite is reasonably inexpensive. The ease and low expense of recycling both extends the lifetime of known reserves and lowers the cost of aluminum. Oh, okay. Okay, students, and our purpose of experiment five is to prepare a sample of potassium alum from aluminum and determine the percent yield. All right, students, pair up and get to work. So, I'm not sure about the procedure. What do we even have to do for this experiment? Okay, well, first we have to wear gloves to protect our hands and safety goggles. Always remember your safety goggles. Um, then we'll weigh out some aluminum scrap that's cut into small pieces. And then in the fume hood, make sure it's in the fume hood because these are chemicals, carefully add 25 milliliters of the KOH solution. Um, then we'll heat the beaker with the solution in it over an open flame or hot plate. Um, then we'll continue heating it until the aluminum is completely dissolved and there's no fizzing, so no reaction is still taking place. Um, and if the volume drops below half of the original level, add water to it um, to bring back to the two-thirds of the original volume. Using tongs, we'll remove the beaker from the heat, then use a glass stirring rod to remove the pieces of the solid aluminum. Um, then we'll filter the hot solution through glass wool or filter paper, cool the solution to room temp for about five minutes, then place an ice bath to make sure it's cooled completely. While continuously stirring, we'll slowly add some H2SO4 until the pH paper is about a 1 to 2 range mm -hmm. on the pH scale. Then we'll heat the solution gently for at least 10 minutes or until it dissolves, per periodically checking the pH to make sure it's still in the right range. Remove from heat, cool in an ice bath again, and this will, should form crystals of the potassium alum. And then we'll collect the crystals by vacuum filtration using a Buchner funnel and a filter flask. Then we'll remove the top part of the Buchner funnel and we should have our crystals left. And then we'll take the crystals out and let them dry and then once they're completely dried we'll weigh them. Oh, okay. Hey students, I'm sorry to interrupt but I just want to make sure before we get started if we know what instruments we are using today and materials. Um, I know. We'll need um, aluminum scrap, um, scissors, a 250 milliliter beaker, uh, we'll need KOH, H2SO4, um, we'll also need a mixture of 50-50 of alcohol and water, we'll need a filter flask and a Buchner funnel so we can do vacuum filtration. Good job. All right, class, before we complete this experiment, can any of you all come to the board and write the balanced equation for me? I can. All 
Alright class, now that we've finished this experiment, can someone please come up to the board and write the theoretical yield and the percent yield on the board, please? I can. Thanks. After drawing our crystals, Reagan and I got 6.32 grams of the alum crystals. Then to calculate our theoretical yield, we took the beginning 0.5 grams of aluminum, multiplied that by one mole of aluminum, divided by 26.98 grams molar mass of aluminum, then multiplied that by the molar ratio between two moles of the KALSO42 divided by two moles of aluminum. Then we took the molar mass of KALSO42 hydrate, which was 474.392 grams, and divided that by one mole of the KALSO42 hydrate. And we got 8.79 grams of KAA, KALSO42. Then, to get our percent yield, we took our number of alum crystals, which was 6.32 grams, and divided that by the 8.79 grams of our theoretical yield, and we got a 72% yield. Excellent results, you two. But can someone from your all's group um, explain to me any sources of error you could have had in these calculations? Sure. Um, there could have been several different points. Um, one would have been not recording the right number. Um, after weighing the products and reactants of this experiment, we could have spilt some of the crystals and that would have skewed our results because we wouldn't have had the right number. And they also could have been lost in the filtration vacuum and any other way we could have spilt them. Um, and calculating also could have been a source of error. We might have added the molar mass wrong or just not calculated properly. Ms. Nyrider, I have a question. Yes, Reagan, what is your question? Um, how do we cite our sources again? Let me show you. Um, first we use the handout, of course, by Dr. Mullen. We also used our textbook. Okay, thank you. Alright class, if you all don't have any more questions, you are free to go. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next week.